Thank you for uh, coming to listen to my talk. Uh, my digital project is on the travels of Lady Nijo, uh, which translates to, in Japanese, uh, the word is to uh, wazugatari, which means un unwanted or unrequested tale. But it is actually a very amazing journey. Uh, to explain very briefly, to give you some background on it, uh, Lady Nijo was a lady in the imperial court in the late 13th century. She lived most of her life in the court ever since the age of four, but she encountered a lot of issues in the court uh, which really make up the first part of her memoir. She was eventually expelled from the court due to palace intrigues, the kind of things you can imagine. The emperor's wife wasn't very happy with her. She was considered to be uh, conspiring with another emperor in waiting. So with no prospects, after being injected in the court, she became a Buddhist nun, which was really one of the many pathways a woman could take in Japan after uh, being expelled from her position. Although this may seem like a real downgrade as she was like now suddenly stripped of her position into a Buddhist monk, this actually opened up a lot of vistas for her. As a Buddhist nun, she was given an air protection due to religion. She was also able to do something that she had been able to do as a court lady, spending her entire life in, Tokyo, in Kyoto, which is to travel and to travel extensively. She was able to follow in the footsteps of one of her heroes, the poet Saigo, who had just a few years before gone on a very large journey across Japan, writing poetry and writing about his journeys, and when he had turned, she had read his account. So she had traveled from about this age, uh, 1283, until around 1304. A few years later, she wrote her account. It does comprise of three books, uh, sorry, five books. The first three are an account of her time at court, which my professors found very interesting. I did not. But the second part, which was her travels, really forms the crux of this project. But why? Why follow this 13th to 14th century uh, noblewoman turned Buddhist monk? What I'm trying to do with this project is to talk about how travel and tourism evolved in Japan, how modern connections happened really through these kind of pilgrimage routes. By following her route, you can actually see the evolution of the Japanese road system from scattered small uh, outposts all the way into larger, larger collections of towns, how roads became more... Uh, navigatable, and eventually under the control of the shogunate, and it became a very specific way of how you had to travel through these roads. It became art. Uh, you may have heard of Hokusai, a very famous Japanese artist who wrote 53 stations of the Tokaido. These, this is artwork, and it's about the way stations he had to stop at in order to travel through this road. It also became an early way of just being fun and having tourism. Uh, this is a goshuin, which is a small book that you can have stamped at various shrines as evidence you were there and to send as a gift evolving from these kind of pilgrimage routes, pardon me. The pilgrimage routes also form a very important part of Japanese history. Even during the Olympics in 1964, they followed the routes of the, uh, the poet Basho. These are very popular routes altogether. So it really shows how these pilgrimage routes evolved into Japanese thought and into the idea of travel in Japan, which you would not consider that many people traveling in the 13th century. It also talks about women and travel, the ability of women to go out and the kind of women that she encountered, because this is a fantastic resource. It does talk about her traveling as a woman with some attendance, which she rarely mentions, but there were some people with her, and the other women that she encounters. And it's also a great way of public history. This book is not really well known. Uh, it was really found in the Imperial Archives only in 1940, which also speaks to how important people thought this book was. It wasn't until 1960 it was published, so compared to things like The Tale of Genji, it's not really well known. So I think it's an interesting way to really present this work, which is even today not really that well studied in the United States, out to a larger audience. The project itself is composed of different parts. The first part, which I'll talk about more extensively in just a moment, is the map itself, which follows Lady Needle's travels. This, I feel, provides a way for people to not only just read this, and I have seen other sites that certainly talk about where she's gone in my map alpha pin, but using Lifted GS, through the next to nice people at uh, Hands-On Visualization, this really provides a way to really speak about the different spots that she's going to, to reconverse really us to each spot and say, this is what happened here, this is how it connects to her writing, and provide a fuller picture of her movements across time. It also provides some explanations. I'll have different parts, and I particularly like this uh, bootstrap theme, which uh, I worked on, to give you the different options. An introduction to who she is a talk about pilgrimage, travel, and tourism, to speak about women in Japan. But I also wanted to talk about how this project is put together as an example of like the problems I encountered and what I'm trying to do with the project. With this slide, you can see very uh, briefly how the map is laid out. And I was actually pleased to see that her route did follow one of the original old routes that we were talking about. It's a logical map. It's, it's not made up. 
even though some people feel that some parts of this were certainly made up, it really also shows that there is a real world connection to it. That even if though parts might be fictionalized, the places and the components that she talks to really works out well in order to try to show this spatial movement. So with this, I really wanted to talk about how she moved across space and time in a way that's deliverable to the public, that's really accessible not just to academics, but to people teaching this in any kind of university and also to students as well. Uh, it really talks about these different options, and there's more I'd like to do with it, because so this is a project at the very beginning of its stage. Uh, I would like to overlay more maps of the major roads so people can really compare them over time and see the evolution that went through. I would like to show that kind of progression of the pilgrimage routes and how they became solidified into even today the modern day Shinkansen follows these routes, these speed train in Japan. Proper photographs and illustrations. You may not believe it, but it's kind of hard to get stuff from the 1200s. It's a, it's a little hard. It's not, it's not really there. So I would like to go and collect actual photographs because a lot of what I have is illustrative, but it comes from much later years. Uh, Hokusai's work comes from the 17th century, the 16th century. It's not the right time period. So I want to like show it more. And I want to be more specific with where the pins go in to really be able to put them. Because there's some controversy. Some of these places are 800 years old. There's a couple places that are like, oh, it's here, it's over there. And really try to talk about these issues of like really trying to locate and put a pin down on a location that's really so distant in the past. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank a lot of people for this project. Uh, DH at MSU, leader, the Cultural Heritage Informatics Fellowship, where I learned to put all this together. And thank you definitely here for having me and allowing me to speak about this project. Thank you.